वेलकम दिस एडिशन ऑफ कुरुक्षेत्र टॉक्स अबाउट द रूरल डेवलपमेंट द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट टू बिगिन विद व्हाट इज सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट इन सच अ फैशन दैट द रिसोर्सेज कुड बी यूटिलाइज फॉर द फ्यूचर जनरेशन एज वेल नाउ व्हेन वी फोकस ऑन सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट वी आर ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ डेवलपमेंट विद ऑटोमेशन एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिवोल्यूशन फोर पॉइंट ओ द आइडिया इज द स्पेस एट विच डेवलपमेंट इज टेकिंग हैज बिकम tremendous and therefore to bring things onto that pace to make renewable energy into focus becomes a major concern so when we talk about energy sector it's crucial it's crucial for all industries agriculture nowadays and for every sector india consumes nearly 9000 billion units of energy and this is derived 47% from coal 31% from oil 15% from other uh, renewable resources uh, and nuclear energy and 8% from natural gas this 15% which is derived from hydro nuclear and other renewable energy needs to be increased in line to meet the net zero emission targets so far fossil fuels have seen uh, distress across various countries uh, oil supply has been in turbulence because of the ukraine russia conflict and natural gas again has suffered held at the mercy of fossil fuel is the 2022 report of lancet commission and this talks about changing climate affecting the spread of infectious diseases as well for example the vibrio which causes vibrio cholera is one of such diseases consumption of raw uncooked food has caused life threatening diseases and this has become a important concern also india is trying to meet the nationally determined uh, contributions and by 2030 India is committed to reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 45% from the 2005 levels which is a very high figure now coming on to renewable energy in India the total installed capacity is 4 lakh megawatts and India has become a power surplus nation there has been a shift towards renewable energy india is third largest in terms of renewable energy production 42% of the installed energy comes from non fossil fuels and this can further be enhanced so of the total potential we are talking about 50% is from solar of the renewable energy 46% from wind and the remaining from biomass waste to energy and small projects solar energy uh, according to the ministry of natural and renewable uh, energy we say that every year 5000 trillion kilowatts of energy is incident over the land area and most of the area receive 4 to 7 kilowatt hours per square meter day the, this is enough to have photovoltaic cells convert solar energy into electrical energy now india is one of the members of international solar alliance as well the major reasons are we have abundance of solar uh, radiation we do have a capability to produce power from solar energy and <clears throat> this is you can be utilized for various agriculture as well as non agricultural and industrial purpose also for road lighting and street lighting uh, now national institute for solar energy estimates that 3% of the waste area can have solar photovoltaic uh, photovoltaic modules and this can generate 784 gigawatts of power which is a great number wind energy could be generated in seven of the states in india which is gujarat maharashtra rajasthan tamil nadu madhya pradesh karnataka and andhra pradesh uh, these state have uh, been at a height of uh, around 100 meters above ground level and if at that height they can generate 293 gigawatts of energy this scheme was first introduced in 1994 uh, when 100% depreciation was allowed later rationalization to 80% was done which is again a good figure there has been identification of various projects which have been done uh, in the course of tamil nadu and gujarat for generating wind energy same goes with hydro power hydro power electricity india has crossed japan and is the fifth in number in terms of hydro electric power projects in india biofuels uh, which incorporates ethanol as well as biodiesel are two important biodiesel is produced from palm sterine oil and ethanol blending is done uh, by the government where it is mandated with 10% ethanol being blended green hydrogen we have covered a separate lecture on it very very important topic green hydrogen and then the other types of hydrogen for example blue hydrogen brown hydrogen black hydrogen which we have covered in the separate lecture uh, refer that carefully 
Now, when the electricity is passed through uh, the water molecules, splitting and production of hydrogen can take place. This is what is called as green hydrogen energy. And the first green hydrogen blending power point uh, plant has started at the Kawas Township in Surat. Similarly, ocean energy can be harnessed. Geothermal energy, energy from within the ground can also be harnessed. There is a project for renewable uh, airport project which is at Cochin which has become the world's first solar power airport uh, is really remarkable and important to know. Uh, similarly, we have food security as another major issue. Now, groundwater extraction uh, and the recharge in India is around 6 1%. Uh, some of the states have extraction more than 100%. For example, Haryana, Punjab and Rajasthan. And the consumption is more than the amount that can be extracted, which is creating grey zones within the area. So, uh, environmental projects need to be taken into account. The PM Kusum scheme, which is the Kisan Uja Suraksha Eva Muthan Mahabhyan Yojana, which says that uh, farmers can now generate energy and this energy can be sold to the discom companies, farmers can earn an additional benefit and money from uh, selling the electricity uh, which can be required in a certain amount for their pumping and irrigation and the remaining can be sold to the discoms. Also, uh, the extent of the area where solar panels are, how many labor is included, the wind turbines, the technology exchange need to be understood. Now, uh, in the field of agriculture, Agriculture contributes 15% to the GDP and two-third of the population is involved with it. It consumes around 20% of the electricity and we have nearly 9 million diesel pump sets which are installed for irrigation. Now these could be run on renewable basis and therefore a lot of energy in the terms of diesel can be saved. Similarly, Biogas is a very versatile form of renewable source of energy. Uh, biogas is also used in diesel engines as a substitute of diesel up to 80%. Biogas engines is possible to replace even 100% of the diesel. Uh, then there are various installations. For example, new national biogas and organic manure program, biogas power generation program, uh, then what can be uh, the sources for biomass, biomass production? Biogas production, so bagas, uh, rice husk, straw, crop waste and agricultural residues are some of them. Gobardhan scheme which is galvanizing organic bio agro uh, resources dhan scheme. Now this has two objectives to keep the village clean and also to generate power. Now this uh, power could be generated using uh, or uh, the waste and could create a compressed Biogas. Now, this compressed biogas, the first of such plant in Asia has been created at Sangarur in Punjab, which is again an important development. Transport sector can be decarbonized. Uh, the average carbon footprint in India is only 0.5 tons per year, which is very less as compared to world figures of 4 tons. Also, the non fossil fuel based resources are around 50%. So, India is already at a good pace. We are already moving with the schemes like FAME 2, which talks about the public transport two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment and the remodeling for those segments. Uh, Shunya Zero Pollution Mobility, that is again a campaign hosted by Niti Aayog and it talks about electric vehicles creating awareness and zero pollution. Now, uh, each of the states are differently providing incentives. For example, Maharashtra is providing incentive for battery manufacturing for electric vehicles under a fixed template. Uttar Pradesh is giving land subsidy for those who are uh, bringing in electric vehicle industries there. Similarly, Andhra Pradesh is giving capital subsidy of 10% on battery and charging equipment. Tamil Nadu is talking about 100% electricity tax and stamp duty exemption. Then is life, mission life, very, very important. Lifestyle for environment. So zero carbon, using a staircase rather than lift, public transport rather than private transport and solarization of homes are some of the ways through which these targets could be brought into account. And there have been various uh, critical aspects that must be incorporated. And then Energy Conservation Bill 2022 talks about non-fossil energy sources, for example, ethanol, biomass, green hydrogen, and these can help in decarbonizing the Indian economy. Also, carbon credit trading can take place. Uh, 
production linked incentive scheme which we have covered in yojana as well this time is a very important scheme uh, this scheme has six objectives one is to build solar uh, photovoltaic manufacturing capacity bring in technology with high efficiency promote integrated plants with better quality uh, source the local material for solar manufacturing and not being dependent on the import for the same reducing the carbon put footprint in this line generating employment and having a sustainable manufacturing practice modera in mahasana has become the first solar powered village in india again a very very important topic then public awareness and renewable energy sources here we have been talking about various schemes uh, awareness campaigns public experiences the uh, the efforts by the government and the non governmental organizations the targets that have been established under the various reports so renewable energy contribute to 20% 28% of the total energy worldwide and coal contributes to 36% so that's a pretty big number and these needs to be checked into account the next is in india renewable energy promotion has become important so ministry has supported various branches for example solar energy wind energy bio energy renewable energy and the solar energy corporation of india the non banking financial institution like ada is talking about loans there are uh, issues of project formulation monitoring and appraisal clean energy transition that means uh, moving from global energy uh gl moving global energy from fossil fuels towards uh, renewable sources of energy with clean and green alternatives is the basic idea also it is believed that over the years this earth surface temperatures would rise and this would increase the frequency for frequent floods droughts heat waves and extreme weather conditions and this would again have a huge pressure on the energy demand india itself is accounted to have one quarter of the total global uh, increase in the energy demand in the next 10 years to come uh, also we have uh, various ways through which uh, revenue could be uh, sourced uh, lithium ion batteries as far as those are concerned uh, we have a production uh, we require a production that is around 20 times the largest capacity which exists today and we have of course found the recent lithium deposits in india as well uh, so that's again an important aspect and then the various sustainable development goals year 2020 2035 20, has been announced as a net zero target year by reliance industries uh, all other industries like tata adani sizlon sr have been committed to reduce the amount of pollution women have been coming forward with solar power technology being replaced and india's uh, job front being created with renewable sources of energy clean energy technology would reduce the problems which is faced by females uh, would help the women farmers with solar pumps and also bring in more safety and mobilization there are various entrepreneurship development programs as well which are running and employment generation would increase under schemes like surya mitra which is run by the national institute for solar energy energy under an autonomous uh, ambit of ministry of natural and renewable sources of energy uh, also <clears throat> haryali green is a women led initiative and that falls under the renewable energy agencies for the state the association for it and the seva and this aims at generating 100 green villages by 2025 green hydrogen global hub very very important kochi is one such center which has been prepared we have talked about hydrogen valley platform in a separate lecture the idea besides that is to create a geographical area where hydrogen producing companies can come in as cluster and the top leaders can take part in the green hydrogen production and space two refueling stations have been established one at faridabad the other at gurgaon another one has been planned at leh which would be set up by ntpc so these enriched uh, programs would help in running the hydrogen buses internal combustion uh, engines and this mission in itself would actually reduce a huge dependence on uh, fossil fuel in india and this would be an exemplary form to understand the mission's prerogative uh, site which is the strategic intervention for green hydrogen transit transition program talks about manufacturing of the electrolyzers domestically production of green hydrogen then is ship which is a strategic strategic hydrogen innovation partnership ship it is a goal bound uh, goal oriented time bound project which aims to achieve competitive technologies in the field of hydrogen and then this would benefit the various sectors 
be it industry, energy and uh, fossil fuel sectors in India. So those are some of the key topics that we have discussed for today. From Kurukshetra, we'll be covering Yojana Kurukshetra and Down to Earth on a regular basis every month towards the month and we bring in the summaries and the important gist and other details are available in the links below. Do follow and stay subscribed for further updates. Have a wonderful day.